Here are some of my favorite bunker golf lessons on YouTube. Watch to the end to see Tiger and Scotty Scheffler talking bunker technique. We have the sand wedge. The difference between this club and the rest is that this one has more loft. That will help you to get the ball up in the air. And also the sole is, is thicker and is round. That will give you a better chance to get throughout the sand. And also the length of the shaft is shorter. Let me explain to you the whole setup. The reason because we must have the uh, cloud face open is because you will get a better release throughout the sand. All right? Then the reason because we do this in the bunker is because we're looking for a solid stance because in the bunker it's very important to stay still. Then the toll you must aim to the left because that will give you a better chance to go throughout the shot. Also, everything is aiming to the left or square because in the bunker you don't need to turn like in you do in the normal shots, but you have to release everything to the left, right? Then the weight on the left side is important because also that will make you stay still over the ball and also it will give you a better chance to take the club a little bit more straight up or pride. Okay, the hands must be in front because that will help you on the takeaway to open the club face, which is fundamental in the bunker. Let's play the shot, but now, first of all, let me explain to you a couple more things. You have to think about how much you have to hit behind the ball. It will be about an inch or an inch and a half. And then you have to control the distance by the speed of the club uh, face. Now we have the feet, the knees, the hips and the shoulders, everything all square but aiming to the left. That will make you swing across the line with the club face open is what we need. Then on the takeaway, we have to make sure that the club face is open on the top. That way. This is square, this is close. Make sure it's open. The tall of the, of the grip, it has to aim between the ball and the feet. And then on the downswing, the tall of the grip, it has to come to the central of the body and square with the ball, with the open club face right there. And then through, you have to release a little bit, but right hand it has to be open that way don't close the right hand because what happens is that if you do that you will rotate the club that means you will close the club face and you will get over spin so make sure that throughout the swing the secret is to keep open the club face all the time and you can do that only with the right hand under and then you release a little bit but under always under and looking at the hole all right Let's play the shot and see what happened. Keep the club face open at the address and throughout the swing. Do not let your right hand roll over at the impact. Hit the sand behind the ball, aim left of the target and release throughout the ball. Make sure you have a firm stance and have your hands ahead of the ball and your weight on your left side at the dress. The speed of the club face will control how far the ball goes. And remember, let the sand wedge do the job for which it was designed. You don't have to swing too hard. The loft and the sole of the sand wedge will get the ball out for you. Let's talk about how much we have to hit behind the ball. I am going to draw a line about an inch and a half behind the ball. This is how much you have to hit behind. Of course, drawing the line is not, it's not correct because in the tournament it will, get, it will cost you two shots penalty, but for practice it's a good recommendation, okay? Then you have to look at the ball. Also, you have to look behind the ball and also you have to 
hold the club above the sun and where you're supposed to hit. Not, not right at the ball, just behind where we're supposed to hit, okay? And then to control the distance, we have to control the distance by the speed of the club face. Not, not hitting more behind or less sun. Just always take the same amount of sun, but control the distance with the club face, all right? Let's hit. I'm Nick Faldo and I'm in one of my bunkers at the Faldo Golf Institute by Marriott in Orlando and I want to give you one of my best tips to help you get out of the bunker and cure that fear of getting out of one of these things. And you will need a rake and that's before you hit it. So I want to show you what you do. Very simply, we need a line. So I give myself a nice straight line and then you don't need it. Because the reason why that is, I want to help you to find the, your, your point of contact with the sand. And the easiest way to do this is you put your left heel on the line, right? Stand a little bit open to that line. Put the club ahead of the line, but keep the grip of the club, well, the whole shaft line pointing back at your stomach, yeah? And then take your grip. Now, what we're trying to now do is find the sand, find the impact point. And simply, you've got to marry up your chest and arm action. That's what we call being in sync, yeah? You're trying to get there. So simply turning back, the club points up to the sky, but the most important thing is how do I time my chest and arms down to land exactly on the line? That's what I'm trying to create. So what happens with a lot of amateurs is, you know, this is pretty good. You have a strong grip and you're trying to get the ball out of the sand and you help it up and you hit way behind it. Or the other one is you're so anxious to see where the ball has gone, you're looking ahead and look, I'm way ahead of the line. So those are kind of my two tips there. If your arms are too fast, you're before the line. If your chest is too fast, you're after the line. So you have to find it. You have to marry up those two. So watch how you, you can take your time, you can pause and think, well, if I turn my chest and drop my hands and arms into the ball, where does it come? That's what we're trying to create. And then once you've mastered that, obviously the ball, our contact point is about a couple of inches behind the ball, so we imagine our line is in there, yeah, and then we just drop down there. And that's how we get out of a bunker. So, I'm going to give you two different options to try to get to this pin. So the first option I'm going to uh, show you is more of a, a high flighted shot that, that sort of lands all the way to the pin and stops. Uh, so for this shot, you're going to want to um, you're going to want to get the ball a little bit further forward in your stance. So if you're practicing, what I like to do is draw some lines in a bunker. So I try to get, you know, for the high shot, try to get this try to get this line very far forward, like right inside my left heel here. And then what I try to do, I try to get my hands a little bit lower. That'll help the ball get up in the air. And from there, what I'm also trying to do is this line that I have from the ball to my left heel, I'm trying to match the angle of the shaft to that line as well. So that whenever I come back into impact, I'm, I'm hitting the shot with the full loft on the club. You know, there's not a lot of, you know, the worst thing you can do in a bunker is shaft lean. So trying to trying to deliver that club back to where you set up is, is really important. So that works pretty good for a flighted one. And then if there's one that you want to try to release down to the pin and, and not you're not take as big a swing. Um, you know, you don't have to have the ball as far forward, you know, even if you still draw a line, you know, you sort of have it, yeah, like middle, middle or just front to middle in your stance. Maybe don't open up the club as much. Still stay on your left side. And then from there, this is more, don't, you know, what the other thing is with the other one, I was trying to get my hands nice and low. This one, you can keep your hands a little bit higher Still try to keep that club shaft pretty neutral on that line. And then from there, you know, try to hit, you know, a good two inches behind the ball just to let it come out and release down to the hole. So two slightly different shots to get you out of the bunker. Uh, 
but too pretty effective. The drill that I do use is just draw the line, two practice wings, try and start the divot on that line with the two practice wings and try and mimic that consistency with you know the depth and the, the size of the divot. I try and practice a lot of times not cutting across it. Yep. Uh, because I have a tendency when I cut across well, you... it too much, I back up like you were saying. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I dump it back here somewhere. Yep, yep, yep. So I like So to you do it through the hands though, like this. I right? can do it with the hands yep. and I try and do it through the arc. And I try and feel like when I'm practicing, I draw these. Yeah. As a practice session. Yeah. Now in a tournament I would never draw never it that do much. That. Yeah, yeah. But you'll be more it's neutral. More this way neutral. Exactly, because I, I have a yeah. tendency to wipe, 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 yeah. and I practice too much wiping. Yeah. Then I get in a bunker and well, it's even that, worse. And also you gotta be careful because when you're doing that, um, it can it can bleed over into chipping, it can bleed over yes. into, you know what I mean? So, you, And then also if you release the hands, start releasing the hands too much, you, you can bleed it. What's interesting about your, your motion is how high you finish. Well, you know what hands. the big thing for me is I want to be as aggressive and as positive as I can through the hitting zone. Yep. You know what I mean? Which I try and finish finishes. really high because I'm trying to hit that big high cut. Got it. Yeah. Got it. It's interesting because I, I try to hit it higher. Yeah. I just let it go a little bit faster with my right hand. Yeah. You see how short your. Yes. I mean, I, and for me, I can't get a high bunker follow through. Yeah. I can't do it. Why is that? Because when I think high, I think hands. Yes, 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 yes. That's your feel. Yes, my feel. Yeah. So let's play one to the back one. Uh, he'll play a 56, he just told yep. me. I'll play a 60. I'll try I won't, and play a 50. I won't change. I'll try and play this. <laughs> I'm not gonna change, I'm not gonna change my, my setup too much. I might just close the face a little bit. That's yeah, totally. what I do. That's why a 56 is better for me. Uh, yeah, and that's my big thing is I, I try and consistently, wherever it is, doesn't matter if it's a short shot or a long shot, I'll try and hit it exactly the same yeah. behind the ball um, all, all that's the time. Something. That's something every great bunker player says. It's just so consistent that way, you know Correct. what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. No, See, I... my big theory behind bunker shots is that if I can consistently hit it behind the ball where I need to and take as minimal sand as possible, yep. I can just land it near somewhere near the pin yeah, and yeah. it'll stop really quick. Right, right. And that's on all shots. Yep. So then, because the big thing about sand is when you're hitting bunker shots and you don't have consistent strike sometimes it comes out crisp yeah. and spins and sometimes it comes out right. running right it may not be your technique it'll be your ball position let me explain to you why most people play the ball too far back in their stance and they've got to lean in their shaft forward the problem is in a bunker you want to hit two to three inches behind the ball that means the bottom of your arc is going to come way back here towards your back foot you're probably going to hit too far behind it. The club's going to come out of the sand and you blade it over the green. What you want to do is you want to play the ball up in your stance so the bottom of your arc can come two to three inches behind the ball. Remember, for greenside bunker shots, play the ball up in your stance, hold the club up over the area you want to hit in the sand, hit two to three inches, and follow through. If you go by this rule, it'll really help you with your bunker game. How far behind the ball should I hit? At what angle should I hit into the sand? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you continue the motion through the shot. You then will find the right spot to get the ball out. So we break our wrists early, just like the hinge and hold. And look at my hands. Look how high up into the finish they are. That's what's important in bunker play. The most critical element to bunker play is to continue your hands into the finish. Just like putting, just like chipping. We cannot stop our hands. We need to keep the leading edge and the bounce consistent as long as possible, just like out of the grass, just like chipping. The bounce on the club will kick the leading edge up into the ball if we stop our hands and let the club keep going. We have to keep our hands and club traveling together at the same speed so we keep the leading edge and the bounce as consistent, as similar as possible for the longest period of time. My hands 
accelerate all the way up into the finish. Look where they are. They're not down here at impact. This did not count too, by the way. You have to accelerate everything up into the finish. Developing this basic rhythm, this basic motion is the most critical element to being a good bunker player. You have to continue your hands into the finish. We're keeping our ball position the same off of the front foot. We're trying to get the ball high and soft, so what do we do? We open the face and then adjust our body. Just like when we open our face from off the green using the hinge and hole method, exactly the same. On a good lie, our weight and position will be fairly level, maybe slightly forward, and the ball will pop right on out as long as we keep our hands moving into the finish. Right. Now, for technique, I like to see the player, I like to see your legs a little bit flexed toward the target like this and also a little wider stance. That's what I like to see. You see all the pros, they don't go in there hitting, hitting a bunker shot with their legs straight up in the tripod. They're always bent toward the target like this. And the weight is forward. And the weight is on the inside of the left foot. Yep. And it really doesn't matter how far behind the ball you hit it, honestly. You can hit it just anywhere behind the ball, and the ball's gonna come out just like that. Fabulous. So you're, you But like a shot like this, you'll get real wide. I get real wide, wide, wide stance, hands back. Man, you made that look easy. What would you do here, buddy, if you had a, uh, I'm you had a good lie? So this is a pretty good lie. Yep. Same thing as you, I'll try and get wide. And last year, I started working on getting further away from it. Yep. Because for me, it was hard to get my hands lower. It was easier if I just said, like a regular bunker shot, say I'm here. Yep. I'll kind of get in here like this, a little further away. Yep. Plus you're so tall, so it's, it's hard to get all the, way, all down. the way down, right? You get your hands low. I mean, this one's kind of a hard one for me to feel. But yeah, really far away, handle back. Yep. And then like you said, just try and Basically throw it at the Correct, bottom. yep. Just use the bottom, try and get it underneath it. Damn, that was good. Good lie. Audio, good huh? Lie. Yeah, that was, that was, that was nice audio. audio. <laughs> I, I get going bad and I just start dragging it. I don't have any release to it. Okay. So me practicing the release in a draw motion gets me into the, where I can feel like the club is being let go. I had bad bunker shots when I dragged my hands. Hands get ahead? Yeah, and just I just dig it straight in the ground. Okay.